When Tysabri hit the market in 2004, it was the most effective medicine to treat MS. In 2019, it is still one of the most effective medicines to treat MS. In this video, I'm going to answer viewers' questions about Tysabri. Want to hear more? Well, then don't turn away, because that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today I'm answering viewers' questions about the highly effective monoclonal antibody Tysabri. Let's jump in. Ellen Smith asks, can you go back on Tysabri after three years off using Ocrevus? Howdy Ellen, and thanks for the question. The short answer is yes, you can, but there are some caveats to consider. So let me unpack this for you. When you take Tysabri, if you have been previously exposed to the JC virus, then you're at slight increased risk of an infection called PML. I've done several videos where I break down PML and the JC virus testing, and I'll throw links up above and down in the description below so you can hear more about that. When we monitor someone for risk of PML, we can draw a blood test, the JC virus test, and it gives us a sense of the risk profile. If you have taken Ocrevus, we can't trust the numbers in the same fashion. It doesn't mean it doesn't work, but the numbers aren't as reliable. So yes, Ellen, if you've been on Tysabri and then you go on Ocrevus, you absolutely can go back to Tysabri. But if you're JC virus antibody positive, you've been exposed to the JC virus, then it's harder to monitor the numbers. Because of this, many neurologists do not like to return to Tysabri after Ocrevus, but I want to stress that you can do it, you just have to better understand the risk profile. Thank you for asking the question. Amanda Bartley asks, question from Southwest Florida. I'm on Tysabri. Should I get shingles vaccine? And if so, how would you space out the timing of the vaccine in the infusion? Is it your recommendation the same for flu shot? Thank you kindly. Well, howdy, Amanda. Thanks for watching the channel and thank you for your question. The short answer is to answer specifically for you, you must talk to your own MS provider because there are too many variables for me to give you a proper recommendation over the interwebs. To speak more generally, yes, people with MS can and should receive varicella vaccine and people with MS can and should receive flu vaccine. We feel that it's important that the vaccines are dead virus, not live attenuated virus. In my own practice, when I'm dosing someone with Tysabri, I'm not terribly concerned about the timing of when I give the varicella or the timing of when I give the flu vaccine. All that being said, again, Amanda, you have to talk to your provider about what's right for you. Thank you for asking the question. Dan Frank Young writes, JCR is positive with a titer of 1.57, new diagnosis. Doctor wants to start Tysabri. Thoughts? Now, to break this down, if you have been exposed to the JC virus, as evidenced by having a positive antibody test, and you take Tysabri, you're at slight increased risk of a very serious infection called PML. We now have the ability to get a little bit more granular, to understand a little more in detail the individual risk by checking the titer. And a titer of 1.5 is, by many people's consideration, a high titer. So really what Dan Frank Young is asking is, is it okay to start Tysabri if you have a high JC virus antibody titer? The short answer is absolutely yes, but we have to consider the risk-benefit profile. Many neurologists in 2019 will look at someone with a high titer and say, no, let's not do that because there's a bunch of other options, including other highly effective options. And when you and your doctor think about the risk benefit, you might come to the same conclusion. But I wanna stress that it's not a, no, you're not allowed. And if the individual genuinely understands the risk profile of that particular titer, they can make a conscious decision whether or not they wanna take the drug. Off the cuff, starting Tysabri if you've never been exposed to chemo in the past with a high titer, your risk of developing PML in that first year might be one hundredth of a percent. So you take a dollar, turn it into a hundred pennies, 
Take one penny, cut it into 100 pieces, and that's the individual's risk. It is not my right to tell someone that that's okay with them or it's not okay with them. It is my responsibility to share the statistics and then to allow someone to make the decision. Again, it's not a no, it's not a you're not allowed, but it's important to have a genuine risk-benefit conversation and to make sure that the individual person with MS understands the risk profile. I understand why many doctors say let's consider a different drug because there are so many others available, but I want to remind you Tysabri is highly effective. Dan, thank you for asking the question. I hope this helps. Leslie asks, any additional MABs, monoclonal antibodies, in the works that don't risk PML, like Lemtrada? Howdy, Leslie, and thank you for the question. As we've been discussing in this video, if you take Tysabri and you've been exposed to the JC virus, which you would determine by having a positive JC virus antibody test, there's a very small risk of PML. And as we study other monoclonal antibodies, everyone always asks the appropriate question, could this drug also cause PML? When we think about the off-label use of rituximab, for example, rituximab has had cases of PML, but never in the setting of MS. When you think about ocrelizumab, there's been seven cases of PML, but they all were in patients that had previously been on Tysabri or other drugs where we can see PML before they started ocrimis. And so to date, we're not aware of any, what I would say, de novo cases or new cases of PML in ocrimis by itself. That doesn't mean that it couldn't happen, but we haven't seen it yet. When thinking about Lemtrada, there's one case in the literature where it looks like someone may have developed PML on Lemtrada. I say may because the case is a little bit confusing when I read it. To directly answer your question, Leslie, it is possible. And I don't want to give you the idea that one drug is 100% completely safe and one drug is totally bad and scary. On the contrary, we have to look at a, a therapy with open eyes and we have to consider the real risk benefit of that therapy in the context of the risk of the disease. If we look for a drug that has zero risk, we may find a drug that has zero benefit. And just like everything else in life, everything is a risk benefit. If you choose to drive a car as opposed to walk somewhere, you'll get there much faster, but there's a risk of being in a car accident. And yet, most red-blooded Americans choose to drive all day long. My name's Aaron Boster, and thank you for asking the questions that you guys ask. Thank you for tuning into the channel. I really appreciate the opportunity to answer these questions. It's a lot of fun for me. If you would like to hear more about Tysabri, check out this playlist right there. YouTube Analytics thinks that you would adore that video right there. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so by clicking that circle with my face in it. Go ahead, click my face. Until my next video or my next live stream, take care.